Um, yeah, welcome everybody. So this talk is about did you mean or spell check a feature in uh, or an often overlooked feature in, in search systems. It's not about containerized anything. So if you have a printed uh, program uh, that has changed, so I hope not half of you are leaving now, but I uh, just wanted to say we mentioned it before. So um, yeah, what, what, I, uh, what do I want to sh uh, show in the next uh, 20 minutes? I wanted to give you an introduction and what uh, did you mean or spell check is in search systems. I wanted to show uh, some implementation approaches. Yeah, I, I wrote nothing fancy, so there's not uh, anything machine learning or anything in there. It's uh, basic data structures. You can um, use existing implementations. You can implement them yourself. Uh, I did implement most of these myself that I, I will show you. And uh, yeah, I'll give a, a short uh, summary of, of uh, what we have learned, hopefully, then. Um, a short about me slide. So I'm working for Ration GmbH in uh, Düsseldorf. We are uh, um, specialized in search projects. We are almost 50 people now, and um, yeah, I'm doing enterprise search projects and products exclusively. M me myself since uh, 2009. The company since 2001. Um, I've worked with a lot of uh, search engine technology. Uh, I listed them here. Of course, the open source one. They uh, really um, get get to speed in the last two or three years, at least for our typically larger clients, and uh, some uh, commercial ones, and there are still some um, uh, technology inside the company that my colleagues have used, but I never saw. Uh, and I, I left out some that vanished. So uh, in the last, what is it, 16 years, there's a lot of technology um, vanishing. So yeah, let's start in, uh, with uh, what is uh, did you mean or spell check in search? You probably know it. Um, I took, unfortunately, a German example. <laughs> but uh, if you write uh, some search term or maybe uh, some name like here, when I did the screenshot, she was uh, the just uh, newly re-elected governor of the Saarland. So she has a long name. You can misspell it. And uh, uh, Google gives you the correct spelling of it. And uh, yeah, you prob probably uh, know that. Um, so user misspelled. There are no or few results. There are almost never no results at Google, but there are no results in your intranet search or in your shop search or something like this. And uh, did you mean will suggest uh, the most likely correction, which uh, we will see um, more clearly in, in the next slides. Well, that's basically it. But still, if you if you set up a search system, you have some let's say, usability decisions to make on how to uh, um, implement um, did you mean. For example, so, so let's, uh, let's take as a given, we will get back to that in the, in the rest of the talk, that there is some did you mean module that delivers a correction and also preferably uh, an estimated number of results for this correction, because you have to, to assess if this is a good correction or, or how good is the correction. But then you still have to decide, when do I want to show this did you mean at all? Like, if I have a 1,000 hits, and there's a, there's a correction that has maybe more hits, do I show it? Maybe I don't show it, because it's already enough hits. Um, when maybe to redirect directly to the, um, to the correction. Like Google is doing this very often. If you have very few hits and you have a correction, then Google is redirecting you to the, to the search result for the correction and just gives you a link back to your original query. And um, another possibility is maybe to search for both. Yeah. So uh, Google did that f some month ago, and then they suddenly stopped doing this. So they are uh, also experimenting in, in this area, um, showing different things to different users. I, I haven't seen it uh, anymore. But uh, you could also say if, if you are like, uh, um, you, you have a, a search result and you have a correction that maybe has a similar um, amount of results. Maybe you just search for both. This can be correct or incorrect. Um, it's, it's hard to decide what to do in your project. Um, either you can, can do something like A-B testing with your users. If it's intranet and you don't monetize it, I don't know if you always find a good way to measure what's better. Sometimes it's just a a matter of ca uh, taste of the, of the person in charge, and they tell you, I like that more than this one, and then you implement it like this. Um, this just, uh, as a background, this is something you have to decide in your project if you, if you set up your search for your webshop, for your website, or for your intranet. This is what, what we basically do. 
In the, in the next slides, I want to look more at uh, this module and how it uh, delivers corrections to you. So what's, what's the requirement for, for such a did you mean model, um, module? Sorry. So um, the requirement is to find a similar query with more results, preferably. Uh, this is already discussable. So first, what, what does similar mean? Um, I have to uh, cut this a bit out of this uh, talk due to the time. So uh, there, there are distance uh, functions between strings. You, you can have multiple of them. Levenstein is like the, the most uh, common used one. You can look it up at Wikipedia. There's a good article about it. Um, so you, you have two strings, and you can come up with a number on how uh, far away these strings are from each other. And that's uh, basically what you, <coughs> sorry, what you need um, to, to say this is a, a, a som somehow a similar correction. So now, um, if, if you um, can come up with more than one possible correction for your user query, um, then you somehow have to rank them, or you have to, to weight them. And uh, there, are, uh, there may be even more factors that you, you can come up with, but uh, the most um, important ones from, from my perspective are the similarity we talked here before. So there may be one correction that's more similar than another correction. But also uh, the frequency or the occurrence or the number of results that you e expect from your correction. So a correction that delivers a million results may be better than, than a, a correction that delivers a thousand results. And you have to weight them. You, you may have a, a, a more similar uh, correction with less results, and, and you have to make these deci decisions too. So what's the basis for, for all what I want to show next as possible implementations? Um, is a dictionary of valid query terms. So uh, somehow you, you have a, um, a list of, of queries that do make sense, and you want to get from this list uh, a similar query to your entered user query. Um, they, they may be one word or more words. 95% of the searches are one word, but you want to give the 5% that enter more than one word Maybe it's only 90%, I don't know. Um, you you want to give the, the small amount that enter more than one word uh, also a good correction, of course. So um, this list may be one or more words, and it should also include some kind of frequency. So how often does this term uh, cure? Um, it possibly, uh, or, or normally, it has also the language, because this is totally separated by language. Um, and you may have more separations, like the search area. You have multiple uh, search interfaces or areas or tabs or whatever, and you only want to show corrections from your area. Um, the, the main goal is to never redirect the user to a zero result page, because this is just broken and an error in your, in your search. You maybe have ACLs, so access control lists, if you're doing secure search, which, uh, which is a common case in, in intranet search, then um, you should, or uh, ideally, you, sh you should include this into your did you mean too, because uh, uh, your correction may be from results that the user isn't allowed to see. So that's not helping. So you, you have to um, reflect uh, the permissions also in, in something like the, uh, did you mean. So where to get this dictionary from? Um, single words are quite easy. You have them in the index. You normally already have them tokenized. That's the, the main uh, uh, technique in a, in a, in a search index. Um, and getting multi-word terms is much more difficult. You, you, you could uh, take like a co-occurrence in the index, but your, your data, um, your amount of data explodes. <coughs> Sorry. And to get meaningful, Multi-word terms is uh, much more difficult. So uh, often you come up with not having a, a good amount of, of multi-word terms into your in, in your dictionary, and um, then you have to think about um, splitting up long um, uh, long queries and check or, or get corrections for only parts of these query, um, um, possibly by word. And uh, this is. Uh, the difficulty here is um, if you have a good correction for parts of the query, you don't know if the whole query still gives a result at all. And you either have to test this, so do a query, but this uh, gives you more query load. Um, or you have to accept that you may redirect the user to this zero results again. 
And of course, if you split up your user query, you would like to test uh, if the whole query first, and then like have a five uh, word query, words uh, one to four, one to three, one to uh, two, only one, and two to five, and so on. You get a lot of lookups um, to your did you mean or spell check. And it's a, it's a matter of the uh, implementation, if it's in memory, if it's in a database, if this is acceptable. Yeah, that's, that's basically what's, what's uh, around it. And I want to uh, have a quick walk through four possible implementations on how to look up corrections. Um, the one I called naive <laughs> is uh, you have a, have a list of uh, terms, more or less. Um, sorry, my examples are in German, but it's just a bag of words. So um, you have a list of terms, more or less, and you have a user query. And then you run through the list of terms and calculate the distance with some metric you, you uh, um, defined before. And if you find uh, um, uh, a correction that's within some metric, uh, some distance limit, so this is acceptable for you, you return it. If you, um, uh, if you are able to sort this list by, by frequency or by number of estimated results, then your first hit is also your best one. If not, you have to s decide how long you will run through this list. Yeah? So maybe um, uh, get the first result, but then it's not the best, or get the first five possible or acceptable results and then return the best one, something like this. Um, the, the advantage of this method is that it can uh, sometimes be done in place, so you already have this data structure. Like if you think about a search engine, you have a list of terms because that's exactly what your index is about. You have a term vector uh, or a term iterator. You can uh, walk through this list of terms, and it's uh, very easy to implement without additional um, disk space. Um, it's obvious that this doesn't scale very well. So if this list of, of your existing terms gets very long, um, it will take a long, lot of time to walk through it. And uh, this, this um, um, comparison or this, this uh, distance calculation normally is, is a quadratic uh, effort. So um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of effort if your index is large. Uh, one thing that's um, also implemented in, in uh, Lucene or in Solar and Elasticsearch um, is uh, getting down, so it's, it's more or less a, an improvement of the first one, um, getting down this time to compare your user query to the um, uh, list of uh, possible queries that you have by um, producing an, an automaton upfront. So for your query, you produce a, a uh, this is a, a, a NFA, so a non-deterministic one. You have to have a deterministic one in the end. Please, also, you have to look it up at Wikipedia, sorry, <laughs> for that time. It gets very large, so this, this one is now quite, uh, um, quite small, but if you um, expand it to a deterministic one, it gets very large, and you have to do this uh, before, and it takes some memory uh, per user query. But uh, then you can run through this list and, and accept your words in, in linear time. So it, it gets faster. It's, it's really implemented, like in this direct spell checker in Solar or this time suggester in Elasticsearch. Uh, it works in place. Um, of course, in, in, in the Lucene index, the terms are not sorted by, by number of documents. So you have to decide um, when to stop. And I think the default is what, what I said before to, to um, look for at most five acceptable corrections and then take the best one. But you can, if you implement it yourself, you can come up with other heuristics on uh, how to do this. Again, this can be done in place, but you have a quite large data structure for every query that you have to build up front. This is one uh, possibility. Another very interesting data structure for doing the mean um, is uh, uh, a BK tree, Bokert Keller tree. Um, again, if, if you look it up, there's uh, some good blog posts about it. Um, the, the disadvantage is now you're building an additional data structure. So you have an index um, and with a list of words, and um, you start to build uh, a, another data structure for your did you mean. And then you have to see how large is this data structure, how many terms, especially if you think about um, putting um, multi-word terms with occurrence, like every three and every two terms that occur in the index next to each other in this dictionary, it gets very large. And then it maybe doesn't fit into memory anymore, and then it gets uh, slow to, to query it, and so on. Um, 
So uh, I, I've implemented that in, in memory and also in a relational database. And in memory, it's very fine. <laughs> of course, it's fast. But in a relational database, uh, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, you have to have some um, cancel uh, conditions where you say, OK, now I, I search for 500 milliseconds, and uh, um, then I stop. Um, and you also have a periodic effort to recreate the data structure from your index and keep it up to date and so on. Um, how does it work? Um, you, you have, again, ideally uh, the most common uh, term in the, in the root. And then um, you have the distance from the next term in the, on the edge. Uh, and so um, everything on this two edge from house has a distance of two to house and so on. And then you can, can use this triangle inequality. So um, uh, um, every stop in between is longer than the direct, uh, the direct uh, distance, let's say, um, to cut out a lot of, um, a lot of um, nodes that you don't have to inspect. So you, you can um, just narrow down um, what you have to inspect in your, in your search tree. And it works quite well in memory and is quite elegant. And what comes out of it uh, is a direct um, hit with a given limit in, in distance. So that's, that's a nice one. Um, another one that's very often used um, is an engram dictionary. So um, engram here means you split your um, words and also your query later into um, parts with one, two, so unigram, bigram, trigram, one, two, or three uh, letters. And then you index them in a, basically in a search engine or in a hash map if you do it in memory. Um, I have a, an example on the next slide for that. Um, the, the advantages compared to the search tree, it's, it's, a, it's again a specialized data structure just for what you mean. But the advantage uh, of the, the search tree is that there is efficient uh, infrastructure for search indexes. Yeah? We have a lot of search engines and uh, also for in memory. Uh, everything's there. And uh, it's also easy if you do a query against a Lucene index, for example, it's also easy to um, add additional filter criteria to, um, to your search in your did you mean structure. Like uh, uh, you can, can have uh, access control lists in the structure and filter your possible did you means by this. Um, the, the disadvantage is that this n-gram distance that, that comes out, so uh, what, what comes out is I have a correction that the, where the query and the possible correction share three n-grams or three tree grams or something like this. This is not very intuitive, so you normally post-check with a, with a distance function like Levenstein afterwards. And then it may be that you don't have enough results in your first 10 results, and then you have to fetch the next 10, and so on. It's a bit more complicated to implement. Basically, this, this index-based spell checker and solar works like this. But you can also implement it freshly on your own um, with the Lucene index, for example. Um, that's what I, what I have shown here. Um, so uh, you basically have an, have an index. Your documents are the words or the queries. They could be multi-term, uh, multi uh, multi-word. Sorry, I don't have it here. Um, you you um, save the length of the word um, here and the frequency, so how often they occur. And then I, I took unigrams, so letters, um, um, in, in one field, and also a search area here to, to filter by an additional criteria. And then you can formulate a, a Lucene query that's a bit more uh, complicated. So for example, you want to have uh, your correction for Laos again, um, at most uh, Levenstein distance one, and uh, in your search area A, and so you can formulate a query that has, of course, one criteria search area A. And your length, you, you know how much it can differ. Yeah. Um, and uh, then Lucene, Lucene has a lot of uh, good uh, query, um, uh, implemented queries. You can say, I want to have uh, four matches out of these five matches, uh, for example. This is this minimum match, what you can set. Or you, you can do this positional queries where you say, um, I want to have um, the term L in, in the field unigrams, um, but only from position 0 to 2. And then, then you can calculate um, what's possible for, for an acceptable correction. But you have to post-check them with, with the Levenstein. It's not directly uh, a Levenstein distance that's uh, better understandable for people. And then load results. Um, if you do not unigrams, but bigrams or trigrams, then um, the, the search get a bit faster because you have more terms in this field. Um, but uh, your post checks are more um, 
um, there, there are more post checks because the results get uh, more fuzzy. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's well being able to implement by your own. So just one slide for the summary. Um, so algorithms are there and uh, they are implemented, especially in, in open source search, but it's important to be able to customize them. You have to see where, where do I get my data from? Where do we get multi-word terms from? Can I do these decisions um, that, I, that I mentioned before? And um, yeah, these, these usability decisions in the beginning, they depend on the project and, and taste and, and so on. And uh, again, also here, data is the key. So um, where do you get valid searches from, multi-term searches from? Uh, good thing is uh, search logs, so searches that users have done and that deliver results. If you are Google, you can maybe just rely on that. Otherwise, you have to come up with other sources. Co-occurrence in the index, maybe something. There's a phrase, suggest an elastic search, that does exactly that. Um, but it takes a lot of space. Um, you could imagine to do part of speech tagging and then extract some patterns like article, adjective, adjective noun, something like this, and say, okay, this is a term that's, that's useful, but it's expensive too in indexing. It, it will slow down your, your indexing of, of full text, for example. Um, or you can um, look around in your project if there are some cheaper sources, like uh, if you index people, you have an address book, you can put uh, first name, last name into your did you mean dictionary, because you can easily get them from your LDAP or something like this. You can collect your sources of, of uh, sensible queries. Yeah, that's basically all for an introduction, if there are any questions. Okay, so thanks, <laughs> Marcus. Thank you. So if you have some questions, you can now <laughs> ask for microphone. You have some question on the stock? No. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. Um, if you do an index-based solution, um, have you ever tried to to make that your only index and basically always just do? Did you mean? And your normal search result would be the zero distance case. And just just in one index, you mean? Um, I, I mean this this in place thing, like uh, running through the list or with an automaton. That's basically this. Yeah, you have just one index. I was and I was wondering if you've tried it for the ngram case. Uh, and then only search by ngram for your normal. No, I've never done that. <laughs> so uh, doing the regular search in this ngram dictionary, I, I haven't done it. No. <laughs> Other question? Mm, okay. One of the last slides, you showed it, um, your search query on the ngram index. So um, which query parser had you been using? So which, I, I don't know the syntax, so I'm curious. Um, I, I built it programmatically with uh, Lucene. In, so not, it's not Sola, it's not, not uh, syntax, but it's a programmatically built um, queries. So they're just using the, the Lucene Java API. Okay. And, and you can do it with that. Okay. And, and this is this is more or less. It, it's not exactly, but it's kind of the format that you give if you print this build up query uh, like with system out. Yeah. So if if you print it, you get a you get a syntax that you can't enter any anywhere. I think, um, but you get an impression. But this is only pseudo code. It's not exactly what you get if you print it out. But but the capabilities are there in Lucene. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Basim. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs>